I think that what we have to recognize within a statute of limitations is the ability for a victim to come forward. Today I'm presenting SB 273, the Phoenix Act. SB 273 is critical and it's a very important piece of legislation because it would extend the statute of limitations for survivors of domestic violence who need additional time to heal from their trauma, feel safe away from their abusers. Sorry. Today with me, I have two courageous individuals. First, Asmi Bianco, survivor and advocate for domestic violence issues. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Esme Bianco, I'm a domestic violence survivor and advocate. Before he succeeded in his seduction, my abuser carefully groomed me, manipulating and gaslighting me over a number of years of friendship. He knew that I was easy prey. I had neither power nor control over my life. A previous intimate relationship had stripped me of both, and so I was led from the frying pan into the fire. Initially, he was charming, intelligent, funny. He told me I was his soulmate. By the time I was living with him, he controlled every aspect of my life. He had a dress code I was expected to abide by. He controlled what I ate, decided if my friendships were acceptable, and when I called my family, I, do, I did so hiding inside a closet. I was not allowed to key to the house, and I would often be locked in the bedroom. He controlled when and if I slept, and I was often violently shaken awake should I go to sleep without permission. Verbal abuse and name-calling was a daily occurrence, but the physical violence was most often disguised in acts of intimacy and was not consented to. In one instance, I was bitten until my body was covered in bruises, on another occasion cut with a knife during sex. He took photos of my naked, mutilated body and posted them online without my knowledge. <laughs> I still have these photos, along with photos of my body covered in welts and flicked with a whip. On one occasion, after four days of no sleep, he became very angry with me. He started smashing holes in the walls with an axe, and as I tried to calm him down, he began to chase after me with a weapon. It was at this stage I realized my life was in danger. I was a prisoner in his hell, and yet I thought I had done something to deserve this, so I just tried harder to please him. My trauma had normalized these horrific events to enable me to survive. It took me seven years to get to the stage where I could see these acts for what they were, domestic violence. After a diagnosis of PTSD, the symptoms of which I still suffer on a daily basis, I started the incredibly painful process of healing from my trauma. The night terrors are the worst part. I wake from these dreams screaming, soaked in sweat, sweat mid panic attack, and once the panic subsides, it is replaced with a crippling shame. The shame is overwhelming, the fear that I might somehow repeat past patterns and find myself back in the cycle. When I finally found the courage seven years later to seek legal advice, I was told, despite having photographic, video, and written evidence, that it was too late. Nothing could be done. So I live. So I live with the daily knowledge that my abuser is still inflicting irreparable damage on other women. The Phoenix Act gives survivors the time they need to break the cycle for both themselves and their abusers, who we know is statistically most likely to continue abusing if left unchecked. I know I will never see justice for what happened to me, but I am here risking my safety and that of my family to respectfully ask you to vote yes on this bill and give thousands of survivors a chance to seek the justice they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Problems, but more importantly, and the person who deserves the most support is the victim. And so I, I'm very thankful for this particular tool. It's alarming to me that you even have to bring this forward. It, it, it shocks the conscience that we have this limit to report. What are we doing as a society when we hush and protect those who have no deserved circumstance in that regard? It's shameful. In, in my opinion, it's shameful there's any opposition to this um, because it's insensitive to those who truly need this avenue to be able to express what's happened to them. Thank you, and I, I too, as chair, want to thank both of the witnesses for, for being here today. Um, not only were your testimony compelling, um, it really kind of exemplified what, what is going on. I personally know of a, a young boy and, and, his, and his sister who witnessed their mother being beaten and at five years old pulling his, his father off of his mother or even taking pictures. I don't think we provide enough um, protections. We don't provide enough housing. We don't provide enough money, resources, so that 
domestic violent people who are in that situation can get out as soon as possible. And then providing enough money, resources, and shelter, even job training, so they can move away from that. My mother had the courage to get out of it. And, 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 and I will always be thankful for that. On SB 273, the motion is due pass as amended to the Appropriations Committee. Joan Sawyer. Aye. Joan Sawyer, aye. Lackey? Aye. Lackey, aye. Bauer Cahan. Bauer Cahan, aye. Deep? Deep, aye. Kamlogger Dove? Quirk? Santiago? Wicks? Aye. Wicks, aye. That measure passed. Thank you. Mr. Portant.